But Peter followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he sat with the servants and warmed himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and all the council sought testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but found none. For many bore false witness against him, but their testimonies did not agree. Then some rose up and bore false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and within three days I will build another made without hands. But not even then did their testimony agree. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, saying, Do you answer nothing? What is it these men testify against you? But he kept silent and answered nothing. Again the high priest asked him, saying to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, What further need do we have of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? And they all condemned him to be deserving of death. Then some began to spit on him and to blindfold him and to beat him and to say to him, Prophesy! And the officers struck him with the palms of their hands. Now as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came. <coughs> and when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, You also were with Jesus of Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are saying. And he went out on the porch and a rooster crowed. And the servant girl saw him again and began to say to those who stood by, This is one of them, but he denied it again. And a little later, those who stood by said to Peter again, Surely you are one of them, for you are a Galilean, and your speech so shows it. Then he began to curse and swear, I do not know the span of whom you speak. A second time the rooster crowed. Then Peter called to mind the word that Jesus had said to him. Before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And when he thought about it, he wept. Thank you, Brother Daniel. Sorry about getting up here early, but you know, old habits die hard, you know. <laughs> I'm not used to someone reading scripture, at least I wasn't before. I wanted to talk to you about the title of the sermon this morning is Warm by the Devil's Fire. What Daniel just read from us from Mark chapter 14, verses 54 through 72, is probably the most tragic 15 hours. Of, of in human history. Mark chapter 9, nine verse 31, the Lord prophesied, said, 
Son of man is being delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And after they have killed him, he will rise the third day. So the Lord predicted all this. At the Last Supper, the Lord told them, before he initiated the, the Lord's Supper, he said, verse 18, Surely I say to you, one of you who eats with me will betray me. There in the Garden of Gethsemane, after he was arrested, <coughs> pardon me, in chapter 14 of Mark, verse 30, it's, uh, he told him again, he says, Surely I say to you not, uh, today, even this night, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. He told that to Peter. In verse 36 of that same chapter, the Lord prayed to the Father, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me, nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. After that, there was a series of approximately six trials, or some of them were, we might call a hearing more than the trial, and then the crucifixion. The Lord had uh, delivered His Spirit to the Father. It says in verse 38, then the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Quite a tragic event that occurred that day. Unparalleled in anybody's memory since then. But you know, the man that we read about, Daniel read about, Peter, who denied the Lord those times. Peter was a man of faith. John 6, verse 68 when the Lord, many of them had left the Lord because of the hard sayings, the hard teachings He gave. <clears throat> the Lord looked at the disciples and said, Are you going to leave me too? And Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we become to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. King James Version says, We have come to know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And later in Matthew chapter 16, when the Lord said, who do men say that I am? And they gave various men, Elijah and so forth. And he says, well, who do you say that I am? To the disciples. And Peter, without hesitation, said, said to him, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. That, was, that took great faith for Peter to do that. But you know, the most stalwart among us can stumble. Can't we? We can be at the wrong place, place where we shouldn't be. And we can stumble. That's why Paul says, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 22, avoid the very appearance of evil. Stay away from evil. We can be with the wrong friends and companions. And we kind of put aside our Christianity for the moment. 1 Corinthians 16, verse 33, do not be deceived. Evil companionship corrupts good morals, American Standard Version said. And we can have the wrong attitude, too, where we can stumble. We must not forget, Peter was not the only apostle who denied the Lord that night. Judas did, by his very actions. Also the others, by their <laughs> actions as well. The other disciples, in chapter 14, verse 27, the Lord prophesied of this. He said, all of you will be made to stone because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered. And of course, when the, when the police came and arrested the Lord, they all just fluttered away like a bunch of a cubby quail. If you've ever seen cubby quail do that. All different directions. And some even continued to deny the Lord. Years later in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 6, the writer says, Since they crucify again for themselves the Son of God and put Him in an open shame. Now what causes someone who was once faithful to the Lord to deny him. Some say, well, once you're once you're there, once you're saved, you're, 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 there's no way you can be lost. You cannot do that. John 10, verse 27, My sheep hear my voice. The Lord said, I know them, and they follow me. I will give them eternal life, and there shall never, they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Out of my hand. True. But we can leave on our own. No one may come and take us from the Lord, but we can voluntarily depart and deny Him. So let's examine this morning what Peter did when he was there warming himself by the devil's fire, starting here in verse 54. 
of our text we read, just look again at that verse, chapter 14, it says, But Peter followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. Peter distanced himself from the Lord. Peter was probably disappointed that the Lord had not put up a fight. You know, Peter drew his sword and he lopped off a man's ear. And the Lord said, put off, put back your sword. If you, those who live by the sword will die by the sword. Matthew chapter 26, 51 through 54. And God, God on to Peter says, don't do that. No. He told Pilate, John 18, verse 36, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight, so that, uh, that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. The Lord's kingdom was a spiritual kingdom. The Lord was no pacifist. He would have fought if that's what if the Lord was to establish an earthly kingdom. If that had been the case, it wasn't the case. And here we see poor Peter was so disappointed, I believe, that the Lord did not fight, did not, he got angry. And you know what happens when you get angry? You sin, in many cases. His anger was not conquered. Genesis 4, read where God came to Cain. When Cain was disappointed that God had not accepted his sacrifice, and accepted Abel's sacrifice, he told Cain, he says, why are you angry? Why has your countenance, your face fallen? If you do well, you will be accepted. But if you do not well, sin lies at the door. And desires for you, and you should rule over it. That's exactly what happened to Peter. His anger got to him. Now, all of this time, while he was being angry, he was in that courtyard, the Jews, the Jewish leadership, had already begun a series of illegal nighttime trials. Matthew 26, it said, 28 rather, it says they, it says they spat in his face and beat him, and others struck him with the palms of their hands, saying, Prophesy to us, Christ, who's the one who struck you? Now what had they done with the Lord? They had arrested him, of course, at night. They had taken him to the high priest compound, which was a rather large, a couple of houses, plus a, a place for the Jewish council to meet. And uh, they took him before the ex-high priest, Annas, who the Romans had gotten rid of. Old man, very old man at that time. He was examined by him. Then they took him to Annas' son-in-law, Caiaphas, who was the high priest. They took him to his house, and, and they examined him there and gave him a trial, a hearing. Then finally they took him before the whole Jewish council, the Sanhedrin. Now all the above things we mentioned there are illegal. Under, under Jewish law. They were legal. It was not to, you weren't to do that at night. You weren't to do it in the temple, which part of the time when the Sanhedrin meant they did that. So, uh, or rather, uh, they, they, were, <clears throat> they were not to do it outside the temple. And he was pronounced guilty right there. At dawn, the Sanhedrin assembles again. Jesus is formally condemned to death for blasphemy. Then they bind him and they'd send him to Pilate. Now John had come along with Peter, apparently. I don't, know if they, I don't think they came together, but they got there to this courtyard, and John knew people there. So he was known to the household servants, but, he, and he, uh, but Peter stays in the courtyard while John goes in to the compound. John got permission for Peter to come inside the courtyard. And there Peter is surrounded by these thugs that had arrested the Lord and beat him, you know, did all these things to him. Surrounded by these people. And here he was warming his fire. It was the month of April, still cold at night. And he was warming his fire. And who else was there when he was warming his fire? The devil was there. Luke chapter 22, <clears throat> the Lord, when he was arrested in the garden, he told those who arrested him, he says, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. Now, Peter not only had distanced himself physically from the Lord, because he was in the courtyard and the Lord was back in the house, one of the houses and moved around, but he had also spiritually distanced himself by not associating with them. He could have gone through that trial with Jesus. John did. But he didn't do it. But brethren, how often do we do the same thing? 
in a sense. I've known brethren <clears throat> that will go to bingo games. And I'm talking about the ones where you pay to take part and everything. And uh, there they think they're doing, you know, and associates with others who are basically gambling. You know, that's all right. Because they, they haven't, you know, they, they're not murdering anybody or, you know, doing any gross sin. Others involve in drinking with, uh, with other people. Social drinking, we call it. Aren't they distancing themselves from the Lord? Of course they are. Exodus 23, verse 2, Thou shalt not follow a multitude do evil. Now, why is Peter there? <clears throat> I believe out of curiosity, he wanted to see, he still cared for the Lord, obviously. He wanted to see what was going to happen to the Lord. But you know, brethren, <clears throat> even though Peter was there, he was not with the Lord. He distanced himself. And any distance from Christ is too much distance. The Lord himself said in Matthew 12, verse 30, He who is not with me is against me. He who does not gather with me scatters abroad. But many people today want Christians to claim they're Christians, want to distance themselves from the Lord in particular situations. Are they any different than Peter? But also Peter denied the Lord. We know that. He denied the Lord under peril. Look in verse 66. See, Peter was below in the courtyard. One of the servant girls, the high priest, came. And when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, You were... Uh, also with Jesus of Nazareth. Now here, Peter was a couple of yards away from the Lord, his friend. Been his friend and teacher for three and a half years. And there he was where his friend was being, was not with his friend, who was being humiliated and spat upon and slapped and hit and abused. Where was he? Proverbs 18, verse 24, there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. And that's not, it wasn't Peter. John 15, verse 15, the Lord, before he was arrested, he told Peter and the others, he said, No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing, but I called you friends. For all things I heard from my father, I have made known to you. Now here's Peter with these men. He should have been there with the Lord. He wasn't. And think about that. Now John tells us this maid servant had been told by John that, uh, that this was Peter, that he, he, he was with the Lord and everything. He, was with, he could be there. But she looks at him, the language there in verse 68 is very intense, verse 67 rather, very intense where she says, you also were with Jesus of Nazareth. You know, why, aren't you, why are you still here? Why aren't you with him? Peter's answer was a retreat out of fear. Verse 68, I neither know not, know nor understand what you are saying, the King James says, and then the rooster crow. Now remember, just a few hours before, Peter had chopped off the ear of the high priest's servant, Malchus. John 18, verse 10. He knew Jesus was under arrest. He probably thought he would be arrested. Even though Jesus had said, leave them alone. You know, they haven't done anything. Told us, the soldiers, the policemen that. Leave them alone. Haven't done anything. So uh, he knew that. He knew he would probably, if he did that, he would have to suffer. If he exposed him, if he said yes, they might arrest him. Years later, when Peter would write, 1 Peter 2, verse 21, For to this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example. But what does he do? He denies any association with Jesus at all there in verse, in verse 68 and says basically, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. And he moves away from the, the servant girl onto the porch. Now, do we on occasion deny knowing the Lord? You know, when someone asks us, a Bible question. And people do that. You've probably been hit up by someone and asked you something. And you say, and you don't answer them. Uh, and it may be a very difficult question. Now, it's understandable, and you've got to find out the answer. You can say, well, I'll, I'll have to get back with you on that. It may be something that, that you can answer. Are you, are you doing the same thing? 
Well, I don't know what you're talking about here. 1 Peter 3, verse 15. Peter wrote, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts be all, and, and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is with you, with meekness in you, with meekness and fear. How about when we hide, try to hide our association with the Lord and the church? I have known when I, in, in secular work, I have known people that I had worked with for many months before I found out, finally found out just accidentally they were members of the church. I didn't hide my association. I didn't care around, you know, a little... You know, thing up here that said member of the church Christ. But people do that way. Or they've got acquaintances that we may have acquaintances that, that don't know that we're members of the church. Or when the church is being ostracized, or the Lord is he being ostracized, his name used in vain, do we come to his defense? Matthew 10, verse 33, and whoever denies me before men, him I also will deny before my father, says in heaven. So Peter says, I don't know what you're talking about at that moment. The roaster crew, ro roaster, rooster crows, excuse me. That's what we say in Texas. We don't say roaster, rooster, we say roaster. Okay, <laughs> no, we don't. But anyway, <laughs> the rooster crows, and don't you know Peter's heart stopped at that moment? Because he knew what the Lord said. But Peter also denied the Lord under pressure. Look in verse 69. He says, the servant girl saw him again and began to say to those who stood by, this is one of them. But he denied it again. Now, John and Luke tells us an hour <coughs> passed between the first denial and the second denial. Peter was just trying to pass himself off as a bystander. You know, just there, a curiosity seeker. But this, this maid, this servant... Realize it, to denounce, announces rather his identity. Now again, what does Peter, Peter do? He, he denies any association with the Lord in verse 70, but he denied it again. Now why did he do that? Why would he be better than say, yes I am? Not made, you know, not said this is terrible, not even that, say this is terrible, whatever he could have said, yes I am. He didn't do it. Perhaps he did it because he did not want to be disliked or hated. John 15, verse 18, the Lord says, If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were the world, the world would love its own. But because you are not the world, therefore the world hates you. Perhaps he wanted to kind of merge back into the shadows here. Away from the limelight. You can't do that as a Christian. John chapter... 12, verse 35, the Lord said, A little while longer the light is with you. Walk while you are have the light, lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he's going. While you have the light, believe the light that you may become sons of light. Sometimes, folks, the sons of light want to pass them off as sinners, themselves off as sinners. They want to be like the world. They want to blend into the background. Maybe that's what Peter was doing. John 17, verse 14, the Lord prayed to the Father before he went to the garden. I have given them your word. The world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Brethren, the world will never accept us. They'll treat us nice. They may not burn us at the stake or put us in prison, but they, they will never accept us. John, 9, John 3, verse 19, the Lord says, this is the condemnation. Actually, John said, that this is the condemnation which has come into the world. The life has come to the world. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light, does not come to light, lest his deeds should be exposed. That applies to all parts of our life. Folks. Applies to our occupations, our jobs, our leisure time, our social activities. People that are not Christians, even sometimes those that are, that are not faithful, will reject us. Faithful Christians accept the fact of persecution and forget any sort of pretense like Peter tried to do, to just blend in. And just, oh, I'm not part of that. Look what Paul did. Over in 2 Timothy chapter 3, Verse 10, 
Paul reminds Timmy, he says, but you, have, but you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch and in Iconium, what persecutions I endured. Out of them all the Lord delivered me. He didn't say out of them I, I got out of it, or something like that. The Lord delivered me. Yea, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Will suffer persecution. But notice also what, what Peter did. He denied the Lord under pressure. In verse 70, we see where he, the second time, or rather, uh, he uh, denied the Lord. And a little later, it says in verse 70, those who stood by said to Peter again, Surely you're one of them, for you're a Galilean, and your speech shows it. <laughs> and he began to curse and swear, I do not know this man of whom you speak. Now there's a chorus of people against Peter. You recognize he spoke to a dialect there of Aramaic from it was in Galilee, and it was very obvious. And uh, one of Malchus's relatives recognizes him, John 18, verse 26, tells him. So Peter's kind of cornered there. He doesn't know what's going to happen. Brethren, often if you're a disciple of the Lord, you're faced with pressures by ridicule or social pressure. I've heard people say, well, you know, all Christians are just a bunch of, of ignorant hypocrites. Or people say, you know, you all think you're the only ones going to heaven. Or you're just a Campbellite. Back home they used to call people, uh, Christians, water dogs. Through that one out. Or, uh, you know, you, you, you folks can't afford a piano. It's, that's why you don't use one. Proverbs 1, verse 22 says, How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? For scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. 2 Peter 3, verse 3, Peter wrote, Knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts. So what does Peter do when he's pressured, when he's put in a corner? He completely denies any association with the Lord and caps it off by cursing, probably used an oath of some sort, which the law forbid, by the way. Now, why did he do that? One reason was because of fear. Fear. Losing his life, fear of rejection by other people. You know, that can be a big... No one wants to be rejected, ostracized by somebody or a group of people. Matthew 10, verse 28 tells us who can ostracize us also. It says, Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. It may have been because of pride. Peter was a very proud person. He had been a pretty successful businessman, a fisherman. He and James and John and, and their father had a pretty good business going there. They had a servant or two, if you read there. And when they left that all to follow the Lord. Look in verse 14, verse 29, where the Lord told them that, some, that they're, gonna, they're all going to uh, stumble because of him. Look what Peter says in verse 29. Even if all may to stumble, yet I will not be. I'm not going to stumble. Well, that's pride. That's pride. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 12 says, Therefore let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. Brother, we can fall too. And part of the pride was disappointment. As I mentioned earlier, he just, he believed Jesus was the Christ, obviously. But was it the Christ that, the, that Jesus represented or the Christ that he had in his mind that someone was going to come and release them from Roman bondage and free them and restore the kingdom of, of, the kingdom of David and Solomon? Perhaps that's what he believed, an earthly Messiah. A few days before in Matthew, well, a little while before in Matthew chapter 16, it says that when the Lord said, told them, I'm going to be crucified. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, that this should happen to you. But he, Jesus, turned to Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. Peter did not understand, and he wasn't the only one that didn't understand. The others didn't either. Now, what was the fruit of this denial by Peter? Look in verse 72 of our text where it says, And the second time the rooster crowed, 
And Peter came to mind the words, called to mind the words that Jesus said to him before the rooster crows twice, twice you will deny me three times. Peter hears that rooster the second time. Also, Luke records, Luke 22, that at that same moment, they were taking Jesus bound across that courtyard to another, another place. And it says, Luke 22, verse 61, the Lord turned and looked at Peter, and Peter remembered the words of the Lord, how he had said to him, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Then Peter went out and wept bitterly. At that moment, Peter knew, number one, that Jesus was truly divine. Because no one could have prophesied what he did just hours before and it come true. Exactly the way he said it would. That's rooster crowing the second time. And he realized that he had sinned. He realized he had denied the Lord. He had lied. It wasn't like Judas's sin. It wasn't a sudden, it wasn't a designed sin, plot. It was a sudden sin. Gave in to temptation. Now the good thing is, Peter went on and repented of that sin and gained forgiveness. Judas never did. But Peter did. Luke chapter 22, verse 31, the Lord said to him earlier, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. My friends, you and I can deny the Lord too. We can deny Him, number one, by not obeying God's plan of salvation. That means, hear the word, repent, or rather believe that Jesus is the Son of God, John 8, verse 20, 24. Repent of our sins, Acts 17, verse 30. Confess Him before men, be baptized for the mission of sins, Acts 2, verse 38. We can deny all that. We can also deny Him if we don't, we continue not to obey Him, even as Christians. That's denying Him too. We should not be that way. Are you and I attempting to warm ourselves by the devil's fire? It may seem warm at the moment, comfortable, safe. But the only safety we can know is if we are in the hand of the Lord. Maybe this morning you need to obey the gospel, putting them on in baptism. Or maybe you need to ask your brethren forgiveness and God forgiveness of your sins. This is your need today. Please come as we stand and sing. Jesus is calling, calling, calling. Jesus is calling today. Why should I linger, linger, linger? I will arise and away. They are so happy, happy. Oh, uh...
Savior.